So I audit about three to four seven-figure e-commerce brands Clavio accounts every single week. And in these audits, I'm able to give very precise estimations on what the upper limit of this account's capability is. Just because I've had years of experience and have audited literally like hundreds of Clavio accounts at this point. And the most common question is basically just like, oh, how do I know that my Clavio account is already doing good versus bad, right? Because you see everywhere online, People saying, oh, you should get your Klaviyo account to 20 to 30%. But the truth of the matter is, the range realistically is actually between like 18% all the way up to like 70, 75%. So in this video, I'm going to explain definitively how to give very precise estimations for your own account based on your store type. Now, if you're a seven and eight figure brand watching this, you should probably just book in a call because I'm able to give a lot more customized insights based on your account if I run the audit for you guys. So... Yeah, I'll put that out there. Let's get into the video. So pretty much online, you hear 20 to 30%, but the range is between 18% to around 75% from what I've seen. Personally, the lowest we've ever gone is around 18%. And the highest we've ever gotten it to is around 73. I just put 75 for the sake of it. A combination of these three variables anyways, which is basically, are you a single product store, multi-product store? Are you a replenishable product or are you like a one-time purchase type of brand? Are you high average order value or low average order value? So obviously if you're multi-product replenishable, like super replenishable and very high average order value, then yeah, your, your email percentage uh, contribution is going to be much higher compared to if you were the exact opposite. So let's talk about all of the possible variations. And then I'll give you some examples of like the types of stores with these combinations. And um, hopefully, you know, by the end of the call, if you want precise recommendations for your brand, you just trust me enough to book in a call because I have literally got like over a hundred Klaviyo tutorials on my channel at this point. So yeah. Anyways, in terms of all possible combinations, if you're a single product store replenishable with high average order value, like this affects email performance quite a lot right? So that means the upper bound for your type of brand is anywhere from 35 to 50%. It's a much more narrow range than obviously the 18 to 75, but other things does vary like basic, for example, like time of year, right? So we have certain stores that perform really well on emails with during like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, but not so well in let's say January, February time, right? So there is going to be fluctuation throughout the year, but the upper bound and the lower bound of that account, it should be fluctuating within that tight margin, which is generally between five to 8%. Now, an example of a single product store that's kind of replenishable with high average order value is like something like car parts, right? Because it breaks down over time. So it's replenishable and it's generally quite expensive to fix. But if you're a car part specialist, you might only sell one, that one specific thing, right? If you're a single product store, that's one-time purchase with high average order value, you'll notice that it's 20 to 30%. The, the percentage drops massively, right? Because we've changed from replenishable to non-replenishable and we've kept the same average order value. The, stuff like this is, for example, like furniture, baby products, right? Because the kid obviously grows up over time and furniture, if you're selling one product, it kind of just never really breaks. So for example, if you're like a standing desk brand, right? Something like that. Or office equipment is generally a pretty good one. And one of the nine figure brands that we worked with did uh, sell a single product furniture as well. Then we move on to single product replenishable low average order value. This is generally between 30 to 45%. The main thing is replenishable, right? Replenish, the reason why the ranges is also so wide, by the way, it depends on to what degree is your product replenishable. So for example, if you're selling like cosmetics, right? People might be buying in a two to three month repurchasing window. So you would be considered fairly highly replenishable. Or if you're like in the food category, so I'll walk you guys over later on what the best performing category is, which is this one, right? It depends on how low the average order value is, right? We have some brands that are around the $15 average order value range, in which case, they're going to be a lot lower on that 30 to 45% spectrum, right? Next is single product, one-time purchase, low average order value, 15 to 20%. Very difficult, I'll be honest. This is where like an account like that will cap out and it generally relies on a combination of having really good flows and campaigns because you're not only trying to convert 
through flows on the front end, but also over time, you want to be converting through campaigns also. Now, we move on to the multi-product section, right? So this is probably going to be most of you guys watching this if you're an e-com brand. If you're selling multiple products and they're replenishable, high average order value, you can go up to literally, you can go up to 75%. I'm not even kidding. We've achieved like 60 to 70 quite easily with high average order value, like, you know, $150 plus type of average order values and also highly replenishable. So for example, if you're selling grass-fed meats, groceries, and funnily enough, weapons and ammunition, like if you sell ammunition, works incredibly well. Right. If you're a multi-product store, one-time purchase and still ha high average order value, you can go up to like 40%. Again, that's your furniture and baby products. To be honest, like the product category is kind of interchangeable between the um, single product and the multi-products. Because, you know, if you're a cosmetic store, you can sell multiple products or just one single thing. Right. So if you're a multiple product store, replenishable, low average order value, you can go up to 50%. Absolutely no problem. We see it a lot in the food and beverage space, fitness space. So for example, like cereal companies, any form of snack and drinks companies, fashion as well. Lastly, multi-product, one-time purchase, low average order value. It's still slightly higher than the 18 to 25%. Uh, sorry, eight, 15 to 20%. It's around 18 to 25. The reason why it's still fairly low is just because a lot of the time, most D2C brands will have like that one hero product that drives most of the sales. And a lot of founders really struggle with like finding that number two product that's going to take them to the next level. Because in theory, a lot of products are complementary, right? But what ultimately drives action is need. So when you create complementary products for your brand, the consumer that you've already sold the original thing to might not actually need that complementary thing, right? It's more of a nice to have, but they bought the original thing that you're selling because it's a need to have, right? So multi-product doesn't often mean, doesn't always mean returning customers. It just means you're selling multiple products to potentially even more different audiences. That's kind of the range. You should look at your store, pick out where you are, and then just figure out like what your percentage should be and if you want a tailor bespoke opinion from an industry expert myself you should book in a call with moi cool thank you guys for watching subscribe for more ecom content and i'll see you in the next one